Many moons ago, we went into the laboratory at Bath University to find out if there's any difference in efficiency between flat and clipless pedals. And to a surprise, there was hardly any difference at all. So why are we bothering to use them? I mean, surely there's got to be some benefits to clipless pedals. So we have come to the real world, or at least the paradise that is out of Badia, to find out what it feels like to go back to riding a bike like we did as kids, with flat pedals and cool shoes. Damn it, are you really going to use those shoes? Yeah, got flat pedals on. Got to have cool shoes with them, aren't you? And these are pretty cool. Our laboratory testing involved Sai riding at a steady state for 10 minutes at a time. So let's start with something completely different, sprints. Surely there will be a significant difference in peak power when you can't pull up on the pedal stroke. Or is there? Let's find out. We are each going to do five maximum effort sprints and analyze peak three second power and five second power for each one. The numbers should tell their own story, but we're also going to be talking about subjective feeling. Uh, well, I think it's safe to say Matt put his all into that last sprint, judging by the noises he was producing. Uh, I am personally really hoping that the flat pedals are reducing my maximum power output because Matt beat me in all five. Results to come later. Okay, time for the first sprint back on Clipper's pedals. Hopefully, I'll be back to my former self in terms of sprint numbers. We'll wait and see. It certainly feels better to be solidly in again. Right, here we go. Beauty! Right, three seconds, 1139. Way above the flat pedals. More importantly, better than Matt. Let's do it again. Right, next up, let's do a climb. We are going to do a 10 minute segment of the Paso Valparolo each, measure power and heart rate and compare the two. But again, also talk about any difference in feeling between the two pedal systems. So Dan, we're just over seven minutes in. How's it feeling on the flats? Um, well, first up, 300 watts is feeling quite hard. Yeah. I've got a feeling that's nothing to do with my pedals. I mean, surprisingly, there's a load of grip on these, more than I was expecting. You really can still sweep your foot back yeah. at the bottom of the pedal stroke and over the top, even though obviously you can't pull up. I mean, you can feel it's different, but it certainly doesn't feel as alien as it did for sprinting. Sure. Three, two, one, lap. Oh, it's hard. Yeah. Okay, it's now my turn on the flats. And straight away, it's worth mentioning, we haven't actually adjusted our saddle height. And I reckon there's about a centimetre or two difference in stack height, but over 10 minutes shouldn't really affect things too dramatically. But foot placement straight away, Absolutely crucial. Yeah. All right, 50 seconds until the 10 minutes is up. About the same average power so far. Cool. Steep this bit, isn't it? My legs are hurting more this time up so far, Dan. We're going to finish in exactly the same place. Two, one. 
Okay, it's time for the fun bit now, the descent. Let's see how these babies feel down some hairpin bends. Oh, I love descending, but uh, Dan, you need a lid on, mate. You can't Yeah, I've descend. got one, but I've seen this on Red Bull TV. If you've got flat pedals and really cool shoes like this, you need to use one of these. A full face helmet? Yeah. With Lycra? Oh, whose is this? They've got a small head. No, you've got just a massive head. Oh. So if some downhill mountain bikers prefer the freedom that flat pedals give them, could they be of any benefit to us on road descents? Well, it is going to be a hard one to quantify, but what we're going to do is a couple of descents of the Valparolo and see how it feels. Ow. <laughs> Let's carve some tarmac. Right, the results are in, in terms of power numbers, etc. We're also going to be talking about how we felt. Uh, so for the sprints at the start, Matt, you had a 15% greater power when you were using clipless versus the flats, which is quite a big difference, I think you might say. Uh, I had a 30% difference, wow. which is an immense oh, amount. Man. Yeah, but I could tell right from the very first time at which I kicked using the clipless pedals, that I had so much more power there. I obviously use the pulling up stroke when I kick in a sprint, perhaps slightly more than you, but it just goes to show you why BMXs and downhill mountain bikers now generally prefer to use clipless pedals for that sprint from the start house. Definitely, I mean, I had a bit of tr trouble getting my foot in the right position. I mean, normally on clipless pedals, your feet are dialed in, you don't even have to think about it, but my thought process was thinking about positions of my feet, and also because I couldn't pull up in the sprint, I was recruiting my thighs a lot more as well, so I felt like I was using my thighs like pistons rather than kind of pedaling in, pedaling in circles like I'm kind of used to. So it didn't feel too bad, but it definitely felt different, and I was think, and I was, there was a certain level of compromise. I just didn't feel like I was getting the power down as I would have done it with the clips. Yeah, you really had to concentrate. I mean, we're obviously used to using clipless pedals now, but even though I was consciously concentrating on not pulling up, there were still a couple of occasions when I sprinted flat out where I could feel that my foot moved because I was pulling it up slightly. When my, I wasn't one of my feet came off at the back end as well. Mm. Yeah. And then next we did the climb and for that we tried to average about 300 watts or I did and you just yeah. rode next to me. Uh, when I had the flats and you had the clipless, we averaged 303 watts for me, you had 315. Uh, I got a bit excited when I put the clipless pedals back on, ended up with a 305 watt average, only two watts above, uh, and you had a corresponding 318 watts, so you were three watts above. Uh, the climbing, I didn't notice as much of a difference certainly as I did on the sprint. I'm still more comfortable, for sure, using the clipless pedals. It does feel like when you're able to pull up, it does spread the load of that 300 watt power over far more muscle groups than when you've just got flats and you're only able to push down. Yeah, I tend to agree. I found that my thighs were getting fatigued. Although my heart rate was pretty much the same, I felt more of an ache in my thighs less recruitment of the calf muscles than I normally would on, on, on clipless pedals. And the most, oh, the most interesting thing I found was when I was riding out of the saddle, I felt that I was almost like pedaling squares. Again, similar to sprinting, when you're out of the saddle, couldn't pull up at all. Yeah. So although I was delivering the power, it was for far less of the pedal stroke. So I was almost like pedaling and bottoming out. So I didn't particularly like climbing out of the saddle, but sat down, wasn't too bad, although I tended to just recru recruit one muscle group. Yeah. Neither of us, though, had a difference in heart rate for no. the two runs, which is quite interesting, quite similar to what we found in the laboratory all those years ago. I did find that there's quite a lot of grip on those pedals. Although you can't pull up, you can sort of push through the top and scrape through the bottom of the pedal stroke, but I think that's down to my cool shoes as much as the pedals. And finally, the descent, which we didn't take any numbers for. That's purely subjective feeling. 
I was concentrating more on the fact that I had a full face helmet on, perhaps we should have used a normal one. Uh, it did give me a greater sense of safety, a bit like the difference between wearing a seatbelt in a car and not, I'd say. Yeah, well, I'd, I felt the same in terms of the helmet, but the pedals themselves, there's a couple of corners when we banked it over, I think you experienced this as well, where I actually clipped the pedals because they're far wider. Uh, and actually on one of the corners that I didn't quite get right, I was able to take my foot out like a speedway rider as well. So uh, not a lot of difference, but just subtle nuances in terms of your positions on the pedals because accelerating out some of the hairpin bends, my feet moved, which is a little bit disconcerting. So again, I preferred descending on clippers. Yeah, as I said, they are wider, so you are much more easily uh, able to hit them on the floor, which could be quite dangerous. And I think going back to the sprints, you could feel that there wasn't as much power when you sprinted outside of the corners to get back up to speed. So I would say, on descent, I'm going to be faster on clipless. Same here. Right, well, I don't think either of us are going to be swapping out our clipless pedals for these, which, as you can see, we've taken off our bikes pretty quickly after that experiment. Uh, you could certainly get around a sporty with them, but I definitely think it is going to be more efficient overall to be using clipless pedals sure. on a road bike, and probably for most mountain bike situations too, although I'll leave that to GMBN. Uh, right, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Global Cycling Network, you can do so by clicking on the globe. If you'd like to buy a Camelback GCN water bottle, head to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Uh, now Coming up are a couple of videos fairly related to what we've been talking about. Just down here is how to choose clipless pedals. Or for the original clips versus flat pedals with laboratory conditions with Sir Richardson and you as a pundit, click just down here.